Does anybody have any questions? I was going to talk about that, yeah. So I keep asking why. So I brought this to remind me that you'll need these in section 4.5. Okay, you'll need your platonic styles in 4.5. And sometimes when you're building them, it might be helpful to trim off some of the chenille on the pipe cleaners so that you can fit two pipe cleaners in more easily. So you just take a scissor and trim them, those, those fit a little easier. They're not so fuzzy. So those we'll need for section 4.5. So we'll need them by the end of the day Wednesday or the beginning of Friday. Yes. So two days. Two days. So here's the platonic solids PDF on, on your Canvas home page module for class activity materials. Putting these together really is the lesson, and that's why I'm asking you to do it, so that you examine the platonic solids and put them together. Notice as you put them together, the symmetry that's involved. We're talking about symmetry to get today, and this, this is a type of symmetry. We see, uh, for example, in this center shape called the octahedron, because it has eight sides, each side is the same shape. It's a triangle. And at each corner, the same number of triangles meet. So here four triangles are meeting. Here four triangles are meeting. Four triangles are meeting. Same thing with all of our platonic solids. And I wanted to point that out because as you're making these, it can feel kind of um, like you're enmeshed in a bunch of little fuzzy sticks. Where do they all go? So remember as you're working, these are all the same size on each platonic solid. So here you have pentagons. So every side will be a pentagon, five sides. And at each corner, three pentagons should meet. Okay, Three pentagons meeting at each corner. For the pentagon, the, the, um, the pentagons are put together into an icosahedron, and here you have a dodecahedron. Maybe I got that the other way around. At any rate, these shapes are the hardest. Um, As you're putting them together, I would suggest you cut your straws in three pieces, all the same length. Okay, you want to have all the same size face, the same size edges. So otherwise your triangles won't be equilateral triangles, or otherwise your pentagons won't be the right shape. They'll have one side or two sides that are the wrong size. <laughs> Anybody have any questions on this project? We're looking at section 4.4, .4, looking at symmetry. So here we see some symmetry in these patterns. Symmetry has been with us from ancient times. We see some Turkish rugs, some mosaic tilings that are ancient. We see symmetry in these. 4.4. 4.4, yes. So symmetry has appealed to us for for um, millennia. Here's a very symmetric face. It's not a real face. It's a face that's made symmetric by putting together 32 different faces. In Austin, one of the researchers wanted to determine what kind of face appealed to people. What kind of face did people think was beautiful? So they surveyed people um, and they thought, well, maybe people want an extremely thin face or an extremely chiseled face. What made people think a face was beautiful? And it turned out what made people think a face was beautiful was being average, and in particular, in particular a symmetric average. So this is a symmetric average put together. I wanted to read the first paragraph in this section. I think it discusses what we'll be doing here. Understanding the world often comes down to discovering pattern and order. 
When we perceive that the orbits of the planets are ellipses or that crystals are made of orderly arrangements of molecules, we feel that we have detected something significant about the structure of nature. Our sense of beauty often centers on balance and harmony, but sometimes we're moved when something departs from an expected order. People have lived with regular patterns for centuries, but only recently have we discovered patterns that straddle order and chaos. These patterns without symmetry have a haunting, unsettling beauty of their own. And again, we find that exploration driven by abstract intrigue ends in ideas that have an uncanny ability to describe our real physical world. Before considering chaos, let's consider order. So we're going to look at order first. So I'll ask the question your author starts this section out with, and the question is, what is the most symmetrical shape you can think of? Think of different shapes. What is the most symmetrical shape you can think of? A circle. A circle. That's definitely symmetrical. So a circle is the set of all points at equal distance from a given point called the center. And so a circle has symmetry. You can fold it in all different ways across the center and one half will look exactly like the other. In fact, you can continue to fold in quarters or eighths. So that's definitely a type of symmetry in the circle. What is? What are some other symmetrical shapes that you can think of? Square. Square. So square has another type of symmetry. Good. All the sides are the same length. All the corners are exactly the same. So that's another type of symmetry. You're doing well. Any other types of symmetry? A hexagon. A hexagon. Six sides. So all the sides are the same length. All the angles are the same measure. Definitely symmetrical. What other types of symmetry can you think of? Hexagon. Oh, an octagon. <laughs> octagon. That's that, a little easier to draw. So eight sides, all the same. All the same. Good. How about some three-dimensional shapes? Sphere. 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 All the points that are equal distance from a given point in three dimensions, not just in a plane. Any other 3D shapes that are symmetrical? Cylinder. What was that? A cylinder. A cylinder. Oh, absolutely. You can go yeah. ahead and take your cylinder and one half looks the same as the other half, whether you cut it horizontally or vertically. Yeah. So lots of symmetry out there. We're going to move from symmetry to um, symmetry of just one shape to symmetry of tilings on the floor. Okay, so we're looking at tiling the floor now. What are some common floor patterns for tiling? Oops. Common floor patterns for tiling. Has anybody ever done any tile work? I did one or two rooms and then I realized how heavy and hard it is. And I didn't even do it. I watched my husband do it and gave instructions. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's labor intensive. OK, anybody, anybody see floor tilings when you go in a um, bathroom or kitchen? OK, what are some common floor tilings? What's that? A bunch of squares. A bunch of squares. Probably the most popular. Very symmetrical too, isn't it? Very symmetrical, all those squares put together. What are some other floor tilings? There's one where it's like kind of tilted. Like you make diamonds? Yeah, like diamonds there. Yeah, yeah so diamonds. In fact, you can make the diamonds out of the squares 
And then some people make it more fancy by putting a diamond in the middle. So you can tile the whole floor like that and you have lots of symmetry going on. Sometimes students bring bags to class that have tilings. Do you care if I put your bag on the screen? Yours is tiled. <laughs> Does anybody else have a bag that's tiled? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Lots of symmetry going on there. Beautiful tiling. Thank you. Anybody have, else have a bag that's tiled? Mine is, too. So we're going to look at a particular type of tiling called rigid tiling. So let's write down what rigid tiling is and then we'll see how this bag exhibits rigid tiling. Rigid symmetry. So rigid, rigid symmetry of a pattern in a plane Rigid symmetry of a flat pattern in a plane is a motion of the plane is a motion of the plane that preserves the pattern <coughs> that preserves the pattern and does not shrink does not shrink, stretch, or otherwise distort the plane. Rigid symmetry of a pattern in the plane is a motion of the plane that preserves the pattern and does not shrink, stretch, or otherwise distort the plane. So we're going to look at a couple ty types of symmetry. The first one is rigid symmetry. So I've made a photocopy of my pencil bag. So I can show uh, transparency over top of it. So here's a transparency of the pencil bag. And I can... Um, <coughs> show that I have rigid symmetry by, trans, by, by shifting over the transparency and see it, the image lands on itself yet without any distortion to the pattern. I can, in, in this, I can translate up or down or left or right without distorting the pattern. Um, so we have the translational symmetry. We also have rotational. I can rotate. I can rotate the transparency and still not distort the pattern. So I have rigid symmetry that shows rotation, and I also have the ability to flip the transparency over. So I have. Um, I can translate or flip or rotate and keep the same pattern. So that's rigid symmetry. You preserve the pattern and don't shrink or otherwise distort the plane, even though we have uh, three different motions of the plane without having that happen, OK? So I'm going to give you some handouts of simpler tilings and ask you to examine those tilings for rigid symmetry, see if you can um, are you able to translate? So that could be up, down, left or right. Are you able to rotate? Or are you able to flip? Or can you do more than one? We could do all of those with this uh, particular pattern that I had. So online students, you can go ahead and print these these from the class.
class activity materials for section 4.4. We're going to have some triangles, hexagons, squares, okay, like this. So I'm going to hand those out along with transparencies in class. Online students, I don't know if you have a way to get transparencies. You're looking for translating, rotating, and flipping. What kinds of, what kinds of, um, what kinds of symmetry are there? Oh, Yeah. Oh. So they are supposed to line up 
but there's some limitations to my skill as a gap together. So the hexagons, they're my favorite because they look so fun when you move like that, you know? <laughs> okay, so you can shift up or down or left or right. You can rotate, I think 120 degrees, or you can flip. So we have all three types of rigid symmetry there. You can write right on these papers. I just need the overhead back. You can translate, flip, or rotate. Squares, what did you find for squares? Translating? Yep, translating left, right, up or down. Uh, rotating? Yeah, rotate 90 degrees. And flip. Okay. So we have rigid symmetry here. Translating, flipping, or rotating forms of rigid symmetry. I don't think I did the triangle yet, did I? for that, go more up or down, okay? 
uh, rotating rotating 60 degrees or flipping. So you can do all of those manipulations and the plane lands right on itself. You don't distort the pattern at all, except for the limitations of how well I was able to create this in a Word document so it's a little bit, tiny bit off. So rigid symmetry here. Translating, flipping, or rotating. I did not give you overheads for this one. I thought we'd do it together. Just looking at it, what do you think? Does it look like you can have translational no. symmetry? I can't even line it up. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Yeah, if, if you try and, and translate, it's just it's not going to work. Um, does it look like you might have flipping? What do you think? Flipping? I'll just flip it. No, flipping doesn't line up. Uh, how about rotating? You think that's going to work? So just from this quick look at this, it doesn't look like there's any rigid symmetry. We're going to look at it more carefully later on. It turns out that there's a much more beautiful tilings of the plane than we've looked at on these little papers. These were just simple ones. I wanted to draw you your attention to M.C. Escher's work, which is done freehand in between 1960 to 19, uh, 1930s to 1960s. I'll just start at the top. So he was a graphic artist before you had computers. He made beautiful, beautiful work. You see very interesting tilings of the planes. No triangles or squares here. Uh, okay, so here, for example, we have what? What do you like? Little children? It looks like children, doesn't it? So what kind of symmetry would we have here, if any? Would we have? Translational, can I shift this left or right or up or down and have it land on itself? Yeah. It's nice that some are colored in. That helps to see you could shift it up and have this land on itself and this land on itself. Okay, so we have translational symmetry. What do you think if we flip it? You think we'd have symmetry if we flip it? Would those little, if you flip it side to side, would these little blue people be wrong? I think they would, wouldn't they? I think even if we shift it up, I think they'd be pointing the wrong direction. How about rotational? Could I rotate this? You know what, though? Maybe if you flip it side to side, maybe the blue, the blue people would be pointing the way the white people are, and you could slide them up. So there might be, there might be flipping. Well, we don't have overheads to do these with, so we'll content ourselves with looking for translational symmetry. So we have lots of Escher's work that have the same shape, the same salamanders or birds, or are these cats or dogs or sphinxes, fish. But he has a number of interesting tilings where he uses more than one shape. So what do you see here? Yeah, fish, and is that some type of insect? Fish and an insect? Or fish and birds? How many of you have seen Asher's work before? Yeah, me too. I like, I like this. I like the, um, the, the which one? The looking glass one? Is it on here? No. Okay. If we come to it, let me know. Okay. It's not a if you, have, if you think of sending me a link, I'd like to see it. I wanted to show you one in particular that, oh, this was an interesting one. Is this, is this a type of symmetry that we've looked at? I don't think so. I don't think that's a rigid symmetry. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. You could, you could flip it, couldn't you, and it would land on itself. Okay. So 
this one I thought was interesting because at first glance it looks like the rigid symmetry we've looked at, but look more closely. Every one of those shapes is different. So I don't know if you could tile the plane with this and then have a type of rigid symmetry or not, but I thought it was interesting. And here Escher has, how many shapes are there? More than two. Are there four? Four different figures. So that's some of M.C. Escher's work in symmetries. He has other work too that you've maybe seen. Have you, did I, I was watching Warehouse 13 episodes lately and they have the Escher house and that, that has the stairs that go nowhere and they turn upside down. So you may have seen that kind of stuff too. Yeah, you've probably seen that. So this is M.C. Escher. Well, let's go back to talking about symmetry and see another type of symmetry. We're going to look at symmetry of scale next. Symmetry of scale. A pattern in the plane has symmetry of scale. A pattern in the plane has symmetry of scale. There's supposed to be two M's in symmetry, okay. Or is scalable. Or is scalable if the tiles that make up the pattern if the tiles that make up the pattern can be grouped into super tiles. If the tiles that make up the pattern can be grouped into super tiles that still cover the plane, that still cover the plane, and if scaled down, and if scaled down, can be rigidly moved. Can be rigidly moved to coincide with the original patterns. So we'll take your little papers that have some tilings on them and we'll go ahead and see if they have symmetry of scale. So symmetry of scale, pattern in the plane has symmetry of scale or is scalable if the tiles that make up the pattern can be grouped into super tiles that still cover the plane and if scaled down can be rigidly moved to coincide with the original patterns. So. We'll go ahead and start with um, our squares. Those were the simplest tilings. I don't know why I have so many. So many papers are not the one I need.
So we have tiles here that are squares, and we can build the squares into bigger squares. That's what we're saying when we look at super tiles. We can build the squares into bigger squares. For example, I can put four tiles together and make a super tile. And we maintain the pattern even when we make super tiles. I can put four of the super tiles together and make a super, super tile. So we make a super tile, and then we make a super, super tile. And if we continue like this, we could tile the whole plane. So if we tile the whole plane in these tiles that are four little tiles together, if we tile the whole plane in what we call super tiles, and then we took it into a photocopier and shrunk it down, it would look exactly like what we started with. Your author demonstrates this with a little Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> so he's, he's made these super tiles, and uh, as Alice grows big, the, the super tiles look the same as the original pattern. So that's what we mean by symmetry of scale. We, we can make super tiles that are the same shape, and if we tile the plane and shrink it down, it's still going to look exactly the same. Now one of the things that we'll find are necessary to have this, this symmetry of scale and the rigid symmetry both is that when you do the symmetry of scale, you have to be able to do it in more than one way. So here we did the super tiles with just four tiles, but we could make a super tile with nine tiles. So what mathematicians have found is that to be able to have the symmetry of scale and the rigid symmetry requires that you can make these super tiles in more than one way. So here we made super tiles on the left with four tiles and on the right with nine tiles. And we could continue to tile the plane with these nine tile super tiles. How many tiles would a super super tile have in it if you started with your super tile at nine tiles? Yeah, 36. Good, 36. Because because we'd have nine, nine, and then another nine and nine. did not see any um, symmetry of scale on the Usher pictures, but he may have some on some other areas of that site I did not see. Let's look at our other sheets and see what if we have um, symmetry of scale. Okay, so we had rigid symmetry and also symmetry of scale. So the squares, tiling has rigid symmetry and symmetry of scale. How about on the back side of that, where we had rigid symmetry with the hexagons, 
If I start putting hexagons together, can I get another hexagon? No. No. Good. Okay, so if I put hexagons together, I can get some beautiful shapes. In fact, if I was doing some tile work with this, I think I would focus on these shapes that kind of look like flowers. And I could tile the whole plane in this shape that looks like a flower. However, it's not a hexagon anymore, is it? Okay. So if I were to make these um, tiles into groupings, it would not be another hexagon. So no rigid symmetry. Wait, I, I'm sorry, no, thank you. No um, symmetry of scale. So these are two different types of symmetry, and you'll need to be able to distinguish when I give you patterns on a quiz, does this pattern have rigid symmetry or symmetry of scale or neither? So if putting tiles together does not allow you to form the same shape as the little tile, then you're not going to be able to have symmetry of scale. How about the triangles? Can you go ahead and see if you can put triangles together to form a super triangle? Uh, still keep it an equilateral triangle, okay? Mm -hmm. You can? How many does it take? Four. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So you can put four. Four together to make a super tile. So there's a super tile, and then um, I can keep going and make a super, super tile in the same way. So I'll make a super, super tile. So to make a super, super tile, we put four sets of four together. So that makes 16. So we use 4 for our first super tile. What's, a, what's another size super tile you could make besides 4? How many triangles would it have? Nine? Okay. Okay, so nine would get you another row down here. So you do a super tile that had four equilateral triangles or a super tile that had nine equilateral triangles. So you could build the super tiles into super, super tiles using either the four or the nine. And again, that being able to make two different size super tiles is what was necessary to have rigid symmetry and symmetry of scale. You can make one with 36. 36, interesting. Okay, so then you'd have... The 36 of the smaller triangles. Oh, that... No, this is 16. Oh, yeah. Well... That makes sense, because you start with 9, and then you put another 1, 2, 3 down. That would make 36, wouldn't it? That would make a super, super cat. Yeah. So this is supposed to extend out into the plane forever, but I... Um, yeah. So we, have, we do have symmetry of scale here. Good work. Well, we did symmetry of scale with um, equilateral triangles. Let's see if we can do symmetry of scale with right triangles.
So let's, let's make right triangles into a scalable Sixty-four triangles on that last one. Okay. Um, okay. Well, let's make right triangles into a scalable pattern. Instead of these were equilateral triangles, they all had the same side side. So they were all sixty-degree angles. So let's take a right triangle. And I want to build right triangles into another right triangle. So right triangles of this size all built into another right triangle. How do the prospects look for that? Pardon? Four. Okay, four. So where should I put the next one? Over here? Make a rectangle? One on top and one to the left. Okay, very nice, very nice. So this, if I had used a ruler and drawn it to scale, this would be four right triangles made into a super tile. So because you were able to figure out a way to do that, you could tile the whole plane with that now. So you could, um, I'll use a different color marker, you could do exactly what you did. You could flip over into a rectangle and then put one on the top and one on the left. Oh, a straight edge would be so much better. Okay. So you have sets of four here making um, a scalable pattern, because now you could do the whole plane like that, right? Every time you make a super tile, then you make a super, super tile, and you build on that and keep making bigger ones. And of course, as you're, as you're making them, you're keeping the original shapes. Well, we're going to take a look and compare that with this other one that you had, because that doesn't look, I mean, that doesn't, still doesn't look like what's going on here, does it? We're going to investigate this, this pattern more carefully, because this, this pattern that we're looking at right here has, um, it has scale, it's scalable, and does it have rigid symmetry? If we shift it left or right, or up or down, somehow can it land on itself? It's hard to tell when I only have a triangle's worth, but picture this spread out in the whole plane. So in the whole plane, it's going to look like rectangles with lines through it, isn't it? As you build bigger and bigger tiles. So th this would have rigid symmetry. And it's scalable. Whereas this one does not look like it has rigid symmetry. So we'll have to look more closely at this. We'll go ahead and do that on Wednesday. I'll see you then. Can you please put the transparencies at the end of your rows and you can take the, um, the half sheets with you that you could write on. Not yet, it'll be next Wednesday. Thank you for asking.
going to need the compass for the voice zone? Yeah. Okay. Or you can borrow mine. Yeah, I did the class activity. Oh, I watched the online video for the class activity, but I didn't have uh, a compass to do it, okay. so i got to redo it. Okay. Yeah, you could borrow mine sometime after class. Or okay. Fun. I'll try and pick one up during the week, but if not, yeah, I'll borrow one before the end of the week. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah.